All right. So functional and factory class groups. Did I mention that this was important? This is the big gotcha. I mean, if you if this this is something that we should not have questions about at the end of the week. It's happened to me once, and it was maddening. Uh, it, maddening in myself because I evidently hadn't done a good enough job explaining it. Because this is this is essential magenta. This is how overrides happen. Okay. So we're going to start to actually instantiate Magento objects. And we're going to grab different instances from different places. Ooh. All right, so quick reminder, Gang of Four. I can never remember their names. Um, but yeah, yeah, four, four programming folk. They came up with this, this idea of like, oh, why don't, we have a, why don't we have a class actually instantiate other classes? It's factory. That's what Magento does. Magento has a unique implementation of that. Um, we'll, we'll touch on this. So what does this look like? Well, this is called realization in Magento. Uh, this is a call you'll see lots of places. Mage, get model. And then first parameter is model class. And then you can pass in some arguments that get passed to a constructor. Uh, what does this do? So this is mage. So this is that, that file that we opened earlier, app mage.php. That's this class. Uh, inside is this function get model define. Okay, that actually maps to get model instance. Get model instance says get model class name. Okay, <laughs> from get model class name we actually use get group class name. This is the only authoritative documentation that I have for calling um, calling a particular thing in Magento, which we'll be seeing in just a moment. Class groups. I always struggled for what do you call it? short names, class names, class prefix, what. It's a class group in Magento. So again, we actually added this, um, added this line in here, mage core model config. This is where you can see um, this happening. So class mage actually dips down into the configuration model. So this is a perfect example of what I was saying about how Magento uh, you interfaces with that configuration. Well, this class right here, if you ever have any question about the structure of nodes, you can find your answer here. It's all right in there, and you'll see you'll see the like the the simple XML calls and everything. You you can't you can't know this class well enough. You don't have to know this class, but if you're looking for an answer that I haven't given you or you can't find, and it involves configuration, it's in here. Okay, so if you want to leave, now's the time. There's no going back from here. Once you go down this road, you're going to start getting really excited. Mage catalog model product. This is what gets it. Um, you know, here's that call to get model, and then eventually you have get config, get model instances, blah, 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 it goes through here. This is the important stuff to remember. This is configured. This is a configuration value, OK? This is, this is it. This is everything. <coughs> Config global models. There's config global models, config global helpers, and config global blocks. This is why those folders are actually, you know, they're up to you what you want to call them. This right here is the prefix. And because name and position in the file system are one and the same, you know, this, this always will map to a file system. This always will be a prefix for the class name contained in that file. All right? So, here is everything you need to know about class group definitions in Magento. Config, global, and then either models, helpers, blocks. Inside that node, you make a node that is whatever you want it to be. Um, so, get model uses the configuration object to look for to look in global in the models tag, and then we'll try and match this against something under models. Okay? So if I had foo here, that configuration structure that's been assembled, uh, if I say mage get model foo slash whatever, the application will look in the config in the configure will use the configuration object to look in global models 
for a node named foo. And then in there, a node named class, which specifies this class, this class prefix. So this, this becomes the first part of the class name. If I have product here, then the, then, then the system is going to try and instantiate a class, mage, catalog, it's going to match catalog under here and try and instantiate mage, catalog, model, product. With a capital P. Yeah, so you're, you're, naming in, um, you're naming in this case, it uses UC words, PHP function UC words, and I think there's a default delimiter in there, and I think the default delimiter is underscore. So I'm sorry to harp on this, but it's just, it's, it's, it's imperative. Um, this here, configuration model is used to try and find config level models. Look for that node here inside that node. Look for a class. And then this is the beginning of the class name. To that, we append. Basically, this is a capital. Or if there's, you know, there will be an underscore notation here. Similarly, it goes through UC words. And because of our, you know, the conventions that we have operating in our system, well, that would be found at, you know, App code core, mage, catalog, model, product.php. That should be crystal clear to everyone. If it's not, please let me know right now and I, will, uh, I, can, I can explain this even more. Okay? And then down here, of course, we have resource models because we just want to complicate things. As soon as you learn one thing, we want to show you another. So similarly, sim similarly to get model, there is a get resource model call. And get resource model does the same thing. Actually, the catalog product resource model so this is how we would actually get the model that knows about storage of products. Um, we would have the same call. It would just be mage get resource model catalog slash product. And similarly, configuration object will be used. We'll find. We'd match catalog, catalog. But inside catalog, we would look for resource model. And in resource model, we actually define another node under models. So then actually the system will hit this and then go look under models for a node catalog resource EAV MySQL 4 and we'll look for a class node in there. We'll touch on all that soon, but that's just that's that's a that's the pattern in Magento for blocks and helpers and models. Once again, let us open up Mage CMS index controller, instantiate a product model and resource model and create a sales helper and a template block instance. Oh, we're going to play with all of the different types here. Um, we're not actually going to deal with that configuration stuff yet, but we're going to look at the factory methods that are involved. So these factory methods, uh, and I haven't shown you all of them here. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you the, the rundown for each of these. And in different contexts, you'll see different, you'll see different methods or syntaxes for, uh, for Instantiating models using the the, cata, the using the factory methods. So you'll have what we've. This is not a complete list. So you can have mage get model. Okay, and then class group. You know something. So these are all static method calls. Why we use the Pamayam Nakuritayam. That's real PHP <coughs> cocktail party stuff. Yeah, so double colon. Um, in Hebrew, I think. Mage get model, class group. So this is, uh, yeah, okay. So that's model. Get resource model, uh, same thing, mage. Um, get resource model. <laughs> Helpers, of course, we have get model, get resource model. So, how would we get a helper? No, <laughs> it's, it's mage helper. <laughs> just helper, just cuz, just cuz they can. All right, 
So, let's see. Let's see. Helper. And tricky thing with helpers, by the way, I'll go ahead and tell you this because it'll come up again. You can actually just specify sales. And that's actually, in class group notation, that actually maps to sales slash data. Okay, uh, that's just one of those other things about the system. If you don't specify, if you only specify a class group, the system will actually look for a, a data helper. That sa this sales here will actually map to a configuration file or will hopefully anyway the config the config object will look in config global helpers for a node with the value sales okay so hopefully this in our configuration structure will have sales and then inside sales we look for class okay and then in that class node is where we would specify mage sales helper okay that's the connection all right if i said mage sales not much of a helper then it would look in a folder mage sales not much of a helper data.php. I mean, that's, that's all these strings do. But that maps, that, that has to map to the file system somewhere, okay? So, and that's what this short, that's what this, that's what these factory methods do with this class group notation. Uh-huh. This is exciting stuff. Okay. All right, so here we are at the end of uh, lesson six, and we're going to take a second to um, we're going to take a second to instantiate uh, the product model, uh, res uh, product resource model, uh, sales hel helper, and the template block instance. So, really, this is just again not a very practical example, but something that that should help kind of get you those of you who haven't done this before familiar with working, you know, with these factory methods. And we'll also kind of take a look again at what's going on inside the configuration. So uh, you may have uh, the index controller open. If not, uh, it's again that's under that's under app code core mage CMS controllers little c controllers index.php. All right, so here we are in our index action once again. And it's very, very easy to instantiate these models and uh, helpers and blocks. You can simply just say, well, we can do, let's do a uh, Zend debug dump call. And I'll just pass different things in here. So the first one we'll do is mage get model catalog product. So in your own in your own code, if you ever need to instantiate a product model, this is how you would do it. Uh, so this is this is just basic 101 level magento. So let's see what the effect is. We'll go back to our browser here. Oh, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's see. But basically, yeah, that's what's going on. 
we have a model, Mage Catalog Model Product. You'll see this up at the top here. Yeah. So that's that. So what happened? You know, but but let's let's look at uh, let's look at what happened. Well, Mage Get Model. So again, this is why I can't I can't recommend enough having having a, a modern you know, professional IDE. Where, especially for a system like Magento, where you can jump through, um, you can jump through function calls and you know, get get the PHP doc references, highlighting code completion, etc. Uh, or you know, and, and you can even use Xdebug to step through the code. It's just, it's a really tough system to learn if you don't, um, if if you if you can't navigate your way through these function calls because they are a bit scattered. So, what's happened here, of course, was we jumped we jumped from uh, the mage class, uh, we jump from our CMS index controller, uh, we're using the mage class, so here's mage get model. Now, get model takes this string, right? So right here, model class is equal to, um, is equal to catalog slash product. And the arguments in this case would just be an empty array. Now, so that calls uh, the config objects get model instance. So here we are over in Mage core model config, calling get model instance. So the model class again, this is the string that's passed in. So this is equal to catalog product. And to determine the class name, we call get model class name. Get model class name takes that thing that was passed in, and it does something interesting. Uh, it checks to see if there's a slash, and if there is, um, if there's, well, basically, if there is a slash, which there will be pretty much all the time, we call get group, grouped class name. Now, grouped class name, that's the one that handles models, blocks, and helpers, and we'll take an argument here, model. So there are analogous functions all over the place um, in, this, in this class. Uh, you can see helpers are called with get group class name, only they pass in helper. And blocks are called, only they get called with block. That's the difference. So this, this is the sort of the ultimate function here. So get group class name just takes this, um, and just takes this slash, explodes it, and checks in the configuration, so we have uh, global models or global helpers, global blocks, and looks for, in here is looking for um, the group name here. So the group is the very first part of the string before the slash. So in our, ca in our case, group here is equal to catalog. And then before we start to build out a class name, though, this is where we check for rewrites. And I think we'll be talking about that a little bit later as well. Um, but basically, if we see a rewrite, we'll use the rewritten class name. Else, we'll go through. Um, uh, Magento has some lower-level functions. But basically, we go here and we build out our class name um, based on what's present in that class, uh, that class node under catalog. So in, in our case, um, if, if you look in the configuration under Mage Catalog, let's see, Etsy config models catalog class. This is how we sort of resolve. resolve our way here. So from this, we get mage catalog model as our class prefix. And we append the class that we passed in. And that's the second part. That's what's after the slash. Append that, and then run this uh, UC words function on it. And get our class name. And then we call, uh, then we return the class name, and eventually, and then we'll call new, uh, and then the autoloader kicks in, et cetera, and so forth. So 
That's how that works. And again, we'll be talking about this even more later because you can't talk about this enough while you're learning it. So that's the product model. Now, for the resource model, something interesting. What happens here, I'll go ahead and show you, is we'll, we'll use mage get resource model. The resource model is still going to match catalog. But then inside of the catalog node, it's going to look for resource model node. And then this value here, which is, just needs to be a unique string, becomes another, uh, another node that we look for under models here. And in here, we get the class prefix for resource models. And of course, we'll be dealing with this more later as well. So what does that look like when we want to instantiate that? So all we have to do is say mage get resource model. And then here, rather than just dump the entire class, I'll just say die. Um, no, let's see. I'll assign this to a variable. Uh, actually, I'll do this. Uh, echo get class. And then die. <coughs> Mage catalog model resource EAV MySQL 4 product. <laughs> so you see, though, uh, hopefully you notice, you know, we still have product at the end. But we're definitely not dealing with mage catalog model anymore. But all we're dealing with is exactly what we found in the configuration. Mage catalog model resource EAV MySQL 4 product. See how that works? We just take the prefix that we find. That is, um, that's basically is found through that first part of the string before the slash. And then we just add the class name to it. And that path, of course, would be mage catalog model resource EAV MySQL 4 product. It's very easy, but hard to learn. So the, again, the class name is the location in the file system. Good. And for uh, sales helper and template block instance, it's more of the same. For helpers, we just simply call helper. Now, the sales helper is interesting because we only need to pass sales. Uh, that's the interesting thing with helpers is that if you don't pass in some other part after a slash, if you don't have a slash, you're going to... Um, get this default behavior. Uh, the default name for helpers and modules is data. So generally throughout the code in Magento, you'll see calls like this, mage helper sales, or catalog, or whatever. Um, but what that's actually going to resolve to is sales data. That just happens in the config object. Uh, in fact, I think I can show you. So get helper class name. I'm, I'm not sure why this was done, but um, <laughs> it was done. <laughs> so that's, that's the one that behaves a little bit differently. But you can see all you do is it just, we're just appending, appending slash data if there's no slash present. So that's all that's happening there. So uh, these two calls here, sales, you know, mage helper sales or mage helper sales data, they accomplish the same thing. And then on the front end, let's see. Yep, mage sales helper data. And again, mage sales helper is a class prefix under global helpers uh, sales. And that leaves the catalog, 
no, the template block instance. So this would be the, we're going to use the core template block. This is the basis, incidentally, and, and of course, this is, we, we really will be talking about this in depth on, uh, on Wednesday with the, uh, when, we, when we get into rendering. But core, the core template block is the main block that you have, uh, main block that you're using when you have a block class that uses a template. It just has some of the necessary, um, necessary chain of functions, uh, fetch view, render view, uh, and, uh, and a specific protected to HTML method that um, allow, allow the rendering system to work its magic on your block. Just you know, take that on faith, and we'll, we'll, we'll actually look at the internals of that on Wednesday. So core. So and again, this is, this is mage core. So this is the core module inside the mage namespace, which is in the core code pool. But again, that can be confusing. So mage core block template. That's this class here. So now this one, though, uh, template blocks are a little bit different. Uh, I'm sorry, not template blocks, but blocks in general are, are, are different. They are, uh, there's no mage, well, there is a get block singleton, but uh, you don't want to use this. You instantiate your block against the, uh, against the layout object. So the layout object is, you know, in a way, it's kind of similar to, um, I guess it's kind of similar to the, the, the config object. So mage core model config, uh, you know, that's the class that knows about the configuration. Well, the layout object, which is mage core model layout, uh, is the one that, that should know about all the blocks that have been instantiated in the system. So how do we do that? Well, we can, do, we can actually uh, we can do that any number of ways because we're in a controller. I'll show you, I'll show you the method that's used, uh, that can be used anywhere. And that's mage app. Um, get layout, and then from the layout object, we call create block. So the 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 uh, the, the analogous thing to you know, mage get model or mage helper uh, is getting the layout object and calling, you know, calling the create block method. And then you just simply pass in, um, you can pass in the, the type. And the syntax is the same to what we've seen so far. So we'll just pass in core, core template. OK? So with mage app, get layout, create block, core template, perfect. Now, if I go and I look at And we've got it. <laughs> any, any questions? Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of head shaking. That's good. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, we're not doing anything practical here. We're just giving you guys a, a chance to, um, a, a chance to get your hands on this. So um, a, a couple of things just to remind you about before we close out this lesson, and that's, that's that um, there are these factory methods that you use. They um, end up interacting with the configuration, and based on the configuration, you end up with objects, and you have these th these different ways of of getting it. So, uh, um, the create block is the most distinct in that you have to use the layout object, and um, helpers the other pitfall. Just remember that uh, a helper that's that the helper factory method with no forward slash in it, it's going to be whatever module slash data. OK. Very good. OK, go ahead and revert. Um, go ahead and revert everything in your index controller, because we're good Magento developers. And we're done. <laughs>